On the scene video coverage of AHA 2012 is supported by Prodexa. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to go through the uh, slides that I'll present tomorrow. So given uh, the time, I'll, I'll go through this more quickly, and I hope you'll all attend tomorrow as well. This is the uh, Poseidon study. It was a comparison, as uh, Dr. Dimler uh, uh, introduced, between cells that are allogeneic versus autologous. The allogeneic cells are cells that come from a donor, and the autologous cells come from the patient themselves. Uh, this f study was funded in entirely by the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute uh, as a specialized center for cell-based therapy. So because um, uh, there's been a lot of interest, as Dr. Dimler pointed out, in the bone marrow-derived mesenchymal stem cells, which are cells that are culture-expanded from bone marrow, these cells are immunoprivileged. They lack cell surface receptors that allow them to evade the immune system. And so both the autologous and allogeneic therapy is possible, but no study had previously compared them head to head. So our objective here was first to test whether the allogeneic mesenchymal stem cells have the same safety profile, both in terms of the therapy and in terms of the immunology, and whether their, uh, their effectiveness is the same. We'll also, I'll also show you within some dosing information. Uh, so this was a uh, randomized study, but not blinded. It was conducted at the University of Miami uh, Hospital and the Johns Hopkins Hospital, and we studied 30 patients, so it's a small study. Um, each, the patients were randomized to get the allogeneic or the autologous cells in one of three doses. And we used cardiac CT scanning to look at cardiac function and the amount of uh, scar tissue in the heart. And in addition, we also looked at some measures of quality of life and patient functional capacity. Uh, this is the flow chart that just shows that the study was, uh, was conducted uh, uh, smoothly and efficiently, and the randomization procedure was effective. There was only one patient who had to be excluded because of a complication, but in the end, we randomized the full 30 patients. Um, this, these are the patient characteristics. It's a very typical patient population, very representative of the millions of uh, individuals throughout the world who have this condition, so there's a huge unmet need here. It's largely a male population in the early 60s. Um, the patients um, are New York Heart Association class two or three, so mild to moderate heart failure, and they all had had heart attacks in the distant past as the explanation for their heart failure. One of the notable points is how, uh, how remote some of these heart attacks were, and we had individuals in the study who had had their heart attacks up to uh, 30 years before participation in the study. Um, so just very quickly in terms of the safety, uh, we found the, the procedure to be very, uh, very acceptably safe. We were able to inject the cells into all of the patients using a catheter system manufactured by a company called Biocardia that has a little helical needle at its tip. So this is not a surgical procedure, but rather an interventional cardiology procedure where the catheter is advanced into the heart and the injections of the cells are delivered. The primary endpoint of the study was to look at safety within 30 days, and both groups of patients had an identical safety profile with only one serious adverse event, which in both cases was a heart failure hospitalization. Um, in addition, I won't go through this in detail, it's in the, in the paper and I'll go through in greater detail tomorrow, but the one-year safety was also very acceptable and equivalent between the uh, two groups of patients. Uh, the next, uh, next I'm going to turn your attention to some markers of patient quality of life and functional capacity. This is on the left the six-minute walk test and on the right the peak oxygen consumption. The, uh, the patients did have an improved six-minute walk test over the 12-month follow-up period. When all of the data was analyzed together, both groups of patients had an increase and there was no difference between the groups. However, when we looked at just within the group, st statistically, the autologous patients um, had a statistical significance and it did not reach statistical significance in the allogeneic group. The peak VO2, on the other hand, did not change statistically in either group. Uh, this on the left is a very important index. It's the Minnesota Living with Heart Failure Questionnaire, which is an index of how a patient quality of life 
And again, as with the six-minute walk test, there was an improvement in both groups that was uh, clinically meaningful. On the right is the New York Heart Association classification, and most of the patients were either unchanged or improved, and again, there was no difference between the two patient groups. Uh, I'm going to go through very quickly some uh, cardiac CT scanning information, and the bottom line here is that we had a very, uh, a very nice reduction in the scar tissue that was equivalent in, in both groups of patients. Uh, we this, this image shows how you can use a cardiac CAT scan to uh, look at uh, the, the size of the scar. Let's see, do I have a pointer here? Okay, so uh, on the right, you see uh, highlighted with a, with a red line is the area of the tissue that represents the scar. The top is at the baseline, and the bottom is the, is the 13 month after. And we see in both groups of patients about a 33% reduction in scar tissue, which is very, very meaningful. Um, I'll just go through this very quickly. As in uh, as in many studies of cell therapy, we did not see an in in increase in ejection fraction, and that's an item of discussion both within the field and I'm sure will be uh, of interest here as well. But when we looked at, uh, at two indexes, one of the amount of scar tissue, this shows just how dramatically it was reduced, and this curve shows that the shape of the heart restored back to normal. With a heart attack and heart failure, the heart blows up with a, like a balloon, and the sphericity index here shows that the sphericity restored back to normal. Uh, a very interesting feature of the study was that the dose response study showed that the lowest dose of the cells did better than the higher dose. We're not quite sure what that means right now, but it's a very important guide for future studies. Okay, I, I'm not sure how to get these movies to show, but basically these are uh, uh, three-dimensional movies that show just how much the scar tissue is removed. The green area denotes the scar, and you can see how 13 months later in this patient there's been a dramatic reduction in the scar tissue. This is very, very important because we think that this is the basis by which this therapy is going to work. So um, uh, just to summarize, uh, immunologic responses were very, very low. Only one patient in the group that got the allogeneic cells had an immunologic response, and this was at a very low level. So we are not concerned that the cells stimulate immune reactions. This is important because some of these patients may need to go on to get a heart transplant or have a repeat therapy, and we believe that that will be of an acceptable risk. So uh, in conclusion, we uh, feel that the study has demonstrated a satisfactory safety profile. We, we've studied rigorously for the first time what the immunologic reactions are to allogeneic cell therapy, and we find them to be acceptable. And um, we believe that the study, the, the, the basic message of the study is that uh, this procedure is safe and that future larger studies are warranted. Thank you very much.